Howard, Chris, Monica. First, I want to thank Monica. Monica did something amazing. She sent me Bruce Alexander's homepage. And I started to go through that this morning uh, before I do my regular regimen. <laughs> and I was really thinking about how brilliant that gem of his website is and how it, it incorporates with so many other elements that, that weave them through, weave through this American addiction the way out. There is a way out, and it's just like Eric said, we have to, we have to give something back if we take something away. So we can do this. And the theme is really what Bruce said in the, in the 70s. It'll work today, it worked then, it worked actually about 4,000 years prior to that. It has always worked with addiction. We first have to see that much of what of our, our addictive problems are is that we're seeing our own reality from the experiences we had in our childhood, not in our adult lives. And that's what clouds the true reality that we live in. And we need then help from the outside rather than to control ourselves from the inside. Now you may ask why I'm half nude and I'm standing out here in cold weather in Pennsylvania and some snowflakes are coming down. It's because I'm working on the reality now and controlling the reality now. How cold I am right now. Well, I'm not because I've learned to accept what the autonomic nervous system is telling me. So what are the threads that we're looking at? Number one, we can make a change by replacing a way of thinking that is filtered through our childhood and our disappointments in the past and bring a clearer picture to reality so that we can start to control the real reality we live in. Now think about this. It's called cognitive behavior therapy. It takes time, it takes work, it takes some skill that you have to teach others. But it doesn't take exogenous drugs to try to match the problems of chemistry within our body. Only for a period of time and then they're free. Bruce Alexander talks about the demon drug and that we're too preoccupied. The, the change came in the 70s and 80s when, they, oh, it's the demon drug. The demon drugs have always been around. And those drugs can be not just chemistry outside the body, but they can be the pull of so many other things. Greed, pornography, lust, whatever you want to call them. These were the drugs of the past if the chemistry and the chemicals weren't around. So what is the theme that we've seen through all the filming we've done thus far? A, some people are treated differently than others because of class or because of monetizing a market, the addiction market. And this doesn't just go for those pharmaceutical companies, but it goes for those who have uh, recovery programs that really aren't functional but very costly. We have to look at what works. Rupert Sheldrake's comparative therapeutic analysis because that is what we can replace what we're taking away. So we have the thread and what we've been filming thus far is uh, a remarkable segment 
of the doctors helping the doctors, a five-year program with, sure, there are some outside drugs and used for a while, but the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal is to be released to be substance-free. Think about that. Substance-free, back functioning as a doctor. If we can do that for doctors in their white coats, the big edge, big, what can I say? Their educated background, we can do it for everybody else. We can make these changes. So the themes were Bruce Alexander, the study on the doctoral program where it was at least five years with limited, limited exogenous pharmaceutical help. The ultimate goal being freedom from, a, from substances and controlling of the mind. It can be done. I'm standing out here right now because I have been working on and off, I guess maybe two years now, on I've been working here about two years now on uh, cryotherapy, controlling the autonomic nervous system, doing various breathing exercises like the sumo breathing exercises, walking in the cold, embracing the cold, telling my autonomic nervous system, it's okay. And the breathing exercises, depriving myself of breath after I've hyper-oxygenated my body. And it works. It works. I can hold my breath two minutes, 30 seconds, almost up to three minutes. Never could do that before. And I walk around in that reptilian part of my brain and I control it. Imagine if an addict just at one time says, oh, I need it. I need, I need to go out tonight just to taste. But he can go back into that brain. He can control his dopamine levels by his own behavior. <laughs> so, I'm going to do my kata, and I want you to think about the paradigm, the changing of everything in a person's mind by allowing them to think clearer about reality. It works. It works. It can change. This world, if we can show people that we are in fact in control and we can replace one thing for another and that all the other things that we're going to give them back are inside them, not outside. They can't be monetized, nor can they be corrupted by anything other than the person themselves. <laughs>